Okay, hi everybody. Uh, let's start uh, today our chapter three about types of morphemes. Okay, let's see something about. Uh, let's uh, going further now about types of morphemes. Uh, the first concept that we have to to know and to understand is the concept of roots. Okay. But, professor, what specifically, specifically is a root? Okay, root, it's like uh, these, okay? In Portuguese, too, it's like raiz, okay? The main part of a word, okay? So, uh, a root is an irreducible core of a word with absolutely nothing else attached to it. It's the part that is always present possibly of modification in the various manifestations of lexemes okay so uh, root is that part that you you can't change okay except for in fixes uh, process that we are going to see um, in a few minutes okay uh, let's see in red here, in this slide, uh, a word in, uh, representing a, a class case of a root, okay? So, this is the, the last part, and we don't have uh, in this root any, uh, how can I say, any change, any modification. So, the red is the root, okay? But uh, using this root, we can um, create uh, another uh, different kinds of words like walks, walking, walked, okay, different variations. We can uh, attach uh, different uh, parts, uh, different affixes, okay. So uh, the only situation where this concept is not true is in suppression, okay. We have seen the conception of suppression in last class, okay, when the, the root changes completely, okay. We can see the example uh, below, like good, and good in a different degree, better, okay. So the, the root, G-O-O-D, is completely modified now, okay. So this is suppression. Except in this case of suppression, we have the the some derivation processes or inflection processes, okay, where we put only uh, at the end of the word uh, ed or as, okay, something like like those. Many words contain a root standing on its its own. Uh, roots which are capable of uh, standing independently are called free morphemes. Free morphemes are capable of occurring in isolation. So, uh, morphemes are uh, some words, the less, uh, how can I say, uh, it's the less part of a word that contain that ha it has uh, meaning, okay? And we call free morphemes uh, those words that are uh, independent, okay? That have a, a meaning in uh, an isolate uh, situation, in isolate use, okay? For example, man, book, tea, sweet, bad, very. So when you read these words separately, you, you understand, you get some meaning. Okay, because they are free, they are complete morphemes, or free morphemes, or another concept, lexical morphemes, are the same, uh, the same thing, but uh, just different concepts, conceptions. Okay, so uh, we have uh, when we talk about morphemes, about uh, roots, we have to make some separations, like uh, lexical and functional in two different ways, lexical and function, okay? When we discuss about lexical, we are uh, treating about words that have, um, that are uh, heavier about semantics, okay? So, are very rich words, uh, semantically uh, speaking. 
and uh, when we treat about function words usually these words are it's not a question to be more or less important because both are very important but function words uh, are, are are not so full of meaning uh, okay they are usually used to to make links okay like conjunctions uh, articles and so on let's see uh, specifically each one each group okay in the lexical morphemes okay we have the groups of nouns adjectives verbs adverbs okay in the functional morphemes we have articles demonstrative pronouns conjunctions okay so as I told you before uh, the lexical group are uh, richer of semantics okay of meanings okay let's go and here are more examples of function words okay they have only grammatical functions okay like articles a and the uh, the demonstratives the this that these and those the pronouns the subject pronouns like I you uh, the adjective possessive pronouns like his her relative pronouns like whom who whose okay and conjunct conjunctions too like yet okay uh, and if but however and so on there are a lot of them right so uh, just an observation when we talk about function words uh, we are treating about the same thing of grammatical words okay they are synonyms it's the same thing to say grammatical words or function words sometimes we're going to find uh, this one or uh, another one right but they are the same uh, in a different focus now in a different way we have uh, the bound roots uh, we studied before that the free root are those uh, complete words okay we can use a, a root isolate of a context they are full of meaning but bound roots uh, read uh, sometimes of uh, another term to 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 have its realization okay let's see some examples so there are some kind of roots that are not free we call them uh, bound roots they are called bound roots so uh, <laughs> we have a joke uh, above I hate to be a bound root okay because he's not free he depends on another thing to to realize uh, its uh, own meaning okay we have here some pieces of words or uh, bound roots so these pieces in orange or red uh, really need to to be together another a piece of word to to have its own realizations okay like meet in permit remit admit sieve in perceive receive conceive pred in predator pre predator predation and depredate uh, alone or separated they do not have any meaning okay they cannot occur as independent words they depend of another word or another combination okay good uh, usually these um, roots or these bound roots comes from a latin language okay it was a latinate roots they are latinate roots like mit and sieve mit means in uh, etymological dictionaries like sand it has the idea of sand something okay um, and sieve it's like it sounds like uh, take without looking up okay so usually they are uh, latinate roots okay here we have a, a, a basic practice describe in detail how the adjectives in 2.25 a and 2.25 B are derived from nouns okay uh, in the letter a we have the nouns medicine person and tribe okay in the right side we have to explain how the modification how the change happened okay in the case of medicine we lost the final e in medicine at the end of the word and we plus uh, al 
so we have a modification from medicine to medicinal person personal tribe tribal okay so we plus uh, the final al okay in the letter b we have uh, two words sense and fact okay in the case of sense we lost the letter e too and we plus uh, any specific sound u that in the morph is represented like j u okay and uh, a l so we have in the transcription sensual sensual and uh, the same the same fact happens with the the next word fact factual so if you can observe you look uh, to the uh, these two uh, morphs and it seems that uh, I mean that uh, we have one morpheme uh, that are not represented in one sorry one morph in each of these words like you that is not represented into the morpheme so uh, we have a, 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 a so we can't call this morph this different kind of morph of morph okay so it is uh, classified in uh, different ways okay uh, for example in the letter 2 in the number 2.25b there is an empty morph so this sound uh, in the morph that we can't uh, represent in the morpheme we call uh, empty morph so it's not uh, that does not represent any morpheme in the word okay so it's not a morph it's an empty morph this empty morph that does not uh, represent any morpheme should not be regarded as morph okay it's a different classification we have to remember this concept okay good now we are going to study a very interesting uh, part of the class we are going to study a fix a fixes okay and when you study fixes we study different classes like suffixes prefixes infixes that it's not it's not so common but we are going to discuss a little bit about them right so uh, affixes are bound morphemes okay are pieces of words they are not free they have to 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 be attached to another different words to to realize its own uh, uh, their own uh, meaning no word can contain only an affix standing on its own like okay it's impossible to have words like those in orange s e d or all like a l okay because they are affixes they need they're not uh, free morphemes they are bound morphemes they need to be attached to another word okay so uh, here we have a, a, a blend okay we have words like uh, in ons ion that are not free morphemes but uh, in another way we have and like a free morpheme the okay um, okay good but as a functional words okay <laughs> this is this is a joke that it happens very very uh, that has a meaning in Brazil a fixation or morph <laughs> morph okay so here we have a, a chart that represents what we are uh, studying now like when we speak about uh, roots we speak we discuss about uh, free and bound free are those words that uh, can happen alone uh, they have their own meaning and uh, bound are some affixes or parts of word that need to be uh, together to another part to to have some realization so affixes and these affixes are divided into different focus like derivation and inflection we are going to see this in few minutes so we have uh, in blue uh, below the affixes uh, that correspond to derivation process like an, full, l, y, 
our NAS ship okay like uh, unfortunately uh, happy uh, happiness okay this is a process of derivation but we have when we have some inflections we have it's like conjugations in verbs in the simple present tense in the third persons we use the letter s for he she or it uh, to to make it the inflection of the verb like the for example the verb uh, work né? the conjugation uh, is I work you work but we have the third persons he she it works we plus the the s so this is inflection is a, a change in the variation in the uh, standard of the conjugation of uh, the verbal conjugation or when you use the simple past tense like we put the particle ed to make to realize the the past okay uh, there are three types of affixes okay oh we can see prefixes affixes and infixes prefixes uh, is the process that you put a bound uh, a bound root uh, in the beginning of a word making a combination the suffix is the opposite process we put the uh, uh, bound morpheme after the the morph uh, sorry the morpheme the original morpheme and uh, you create another word and infixes is a very uh, specific um, process that uh, it's not so common in English okay it's common in another kinds of language but we have some cases with n and m in English specifically we uh, uh, words that were influenced or or the Latinate uh, terms okay <coughs> in the first case we have prefixes prefixes or prefix is an affix attached before a root or esteem or a base okay like re and in root esteem and base are almost the same thing and uh, there are some differences of the conception or perception but basically they are the same they treat about the same thing okay we're going to see so we have a, a, an example of prefixation airy before airy we put uh, the word milli milli airy or micro airy so <laughs> uh, these sound like prefixes okay uh, let's see now another example like pro anti né? anti racism okay anti Christ you can make a lot of combinations with these prefixes Hertz megahertz gigahertz okay uh, and another kinds of uh, the the fixes in in red are the prefixes okay they are put before the 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 original word uh, remake uh, make uh, or make again you call remake untied uh, it actually it's not a, a very organized person indecent okay <laughs> this boy have to grow so it's not so normal in our uh, culture okay now we are going to see the opposite process uh, suffixes a suffix is an affix attached after a root or esteem or uh, oh in Portuguese no in English or base like uh, li or is as in ed let's see some examples like if you have the word hope about politicians the American have some hope about 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 Obama's government if you put the suffix less you lost all your hope okay you you don't have any hope anymore uh, dirt dirtier dirt dirtiest okay here we have the uh, comparison degrees okay and the last uh, ones are waiter okay quickly player uh, kindly that jumped okay and in fixes okay if you have some uh, bound morphemes that you put uh, before some word in the beginning and suffixes that you attach at the end of some word in fixes what are infixes? or uh, it's
it's like a situation is it like a situation when you have prefix and suffix together at the same time no <laughs> a student told me, told me this but a very it's very it's a very interesting theory but it's not okay in fixes are uh, in specific case uh, when the root su suffers something you put some um, different term in the root okay into a root let's see it's like a surgery <laughs> it's almost there okay uh, in fixes and in fix is an affix insert into a root itself like Arabic and uh, Hebrew in English the only infix is n that is insert before the last consonant of the root in few uh, words of Latin origin okay so it's not so common in English but we have some cases okay like we have the root here cub root so we have some uh, derivations okay like incubate in cubus but when we have some derivations like uh, those last ones uh, we we have a m an m a m but m does it not belong to those words okay this is a case of infix okay this m uh, beca became part of this word so it was insert in the middle of the word so this is infix and infix case or two infixes cases okay uh, another different case is kangaroo Kangu and you put you put the word bloody between kanga and ro so you have an infix case another uh, different expression like impossible you plus the fucking at the middle of the word so you have an infix in fucking possible okay now let us specify uh, what means exactly root steam roots steams and bases okay i told you before that they are almost the same yes but there are some different focus to them specific let's see root uh, is like in portuguese raiz okay the part of the word that you can't change uh, the steam is that part of a word that is in existence before any inflectional affixes, okay? Okay, for example, if you take off this S in black, you have a root or you have a steam. But when you make some variations, derivations of this word for inflectional process, like uh, you, you change this word from singular to plural, putting the letter s for example uh, you don't have any more a steam but if you have the original word without any inflection you have a case of steam okay this root is a steam too okay steam inflectional affixes affix it's the same situation for work work is a root work is a steam but when you change this steam when you uh, put some uh, variation some this word uh, suffers some inflection process uh, adding the er so uh, this is not a steam anymore right so and basis basis is very simple basis uh, or base it is any unit to which affixes of any kind can be added the affixes attached to a base may be inflectional or derivational affixes okay basis is uh, each word any word that is prepared to receive any attachment okay to make any combination f uh, from inflectional or derivational affixes right good okay uh, now we are prepared to understand what is this team but let's see a specific uh, kind of steam. We have the steam extenders. If you take the example of ox in Portuguese, boy in the singular, uh, and you plus some term n, okay, uh, uh, to change this word uh, to a plural, we have the plural of ox, oxen, okay? But in this case, we have only a combination of two parts ox and n 
to make the plural. It's a question of only combination. It's very, very different uh, from child, for example. Child is a, an irregular verb. Oh, sorry, it's an irregular noun. <laughs> okay, when you change uh, this word to the plural, okay, uh, you, you need to, to, how can I say, uh, a standard, okay? Something to link the part. So we have this in blue, R plus name. So you, f you create the word children. So this link, this bridge between the singular and plural is called steams, steam extenders, okay? Uh, we have another case with the word before. Uh, it's very difficult to pronounce. Let's try the transcription. Brother, brother. <laughs> okay, so the same case of steam extender. Okay, the letter R in uh, blue uh, works like a bridge between the singular and the new plural. Uh, inflectional and derivation. Inflectional and derivation morphemes form forms new word in different ways. Okay by changing the meaning of the base to which they are attached. For example, uh, when we have this process in, uh, we put this term in red to this word kind, we change completely the, the meaning of the word, okay? We have the first word in original kind, like in a positive way and a, a unkind, like in a negative uh, focus, okay? Like this woman is an, an unkind person. <laughs> She's very aggressive with him. <laughs> okay. Uh, obey, disobey. Okay. Uh, we have different uh, situ a different situation here by changing the word class that a base belongs to, adding uh, l y, kind, kindly. Okay. Uh, if we have a normal situation and we have a super kind person, kindly. Okay, good. Um, and we have some variations of regular inflection and irregular inflection. Okay, let's see a little bit about uh, like uh, tooth, teeth, man, man, child, children. In this case, are irregular. I have two mans. <laughs> the, uh, this is very common where a foreign person is learning English. Okay. Uh, yeah, in elementary levels like Brazilian too because in general the plural form uh, you obtain a plural form in English uh, adding s to the nouns but man is a case of a irregular uh, noun so you change the letter a for e okay it's like the inflectional process uh, he plays he she it you have to put s usually when you are conjugating these verbs, okay? He play the he play guitar, and we need the 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 article the when we are treating about uh, musical instruments. We have to use the guitar, the piano, the flute, okay, and so on. Um, I don't can read in English, okay? Uh, we can uh, observe that. Um, uh, you have to take off here the auxiliary. Do not because can is a modal verb, okay? So it's not necessary to use auxiliary with modal verbs because uh, it works, it, uh, the modal verb, it works like uh, an auxiliary for itself, okay? And usually modal verbs doesn't accept any uh, particle to particle, for example, to be followed by, by it, okay? So, a plural of nouns like car, cars, usually happens in English. It's very common. Box, boxes, church, churches, okay. Go, went. Here we have a different uh, situation. Uh, the, the root uh, changes completely when you put uh, the verb go in the past, for example. And we have some variations in the simple present tense in another, uh, in present continuous or past participle, like go, goes, going, gone. Are go and went allomorphs uh, of the same morpheme? It's a question to think, okay? Suppression, different rules, wife, wives. 
Okay, and sometimes there are some strange forms uh, that are the same for singular and plural, like fish, deer, truth, truth. Like uh, uh, a deer was visible through the trees, through the trees. Two deer, at the same uh, way, were visible through the trees. Okay, so it's strange for us Brazilian because uh, we usually put s for <laughs> plural so it's a strange for us to see a word uh, a similar word a homograph used in a singular and a, in a plural too okay inflection and derivational uh, compounding let's see what uh, let let's pass some slides okay uh, i would like to okay to speak a little bit about compounds okay we have compounds uh, are a case when you have for example you can observe two roots that uh, make a combination and creates a new term like greenhouse when you put together is a compound the second example a uh, green house separated it's not a case, of, a case of compound so we have two different meanings here a greenhouse like a place where, where you, you have a lot of uh, kinds of plants and a greenhouse uh, literally a house that has the green color okay <laughs> it's a joke hey which do you prefer a greenhouse or a greenhouse <laughs> okay so uh, this part in red is only to remember that uh, to make some difference in the pronunciation in compounds we usually stress the first uh, part of the word green house and uh, case where we don't have compounds we usually uh, put the distress on the second word greenhouse right so we have similar case like blackboard blackboard uh, it's a board with a black color and blackboard uh, a board for written on right or difference and we have cases like this, hairnet or hairnet, okay, are different uh, types of net, okay. White house, a simple house that is white and not and is not yellow, and a white house, it's the residence of the U U.S. president, okay. So we stop here. I hope you enjoy these concepts and you have to study the book okay this slide is very good to study but uh, the book is a source of knowledge and we have more detailed information to read there okay so uh, I hope you enjoy thank you very much see you soon bye